Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another Brawl deck, and despite not actually being in standard, we can still use Talran Sky Summoner as our standard Brawl Commander, as it was added in the Brawler's Guild Hall at some point. Talrand is a 4 mana 2 2 Merfolk Wizard that says whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we get to make a 2 2 Blue Drake creature token with flying. So that's a very powerful ability, and we will be using Talrand as one of our primary win conditions. So to take full advantage of this ability, we want to play a lot of cheap instants and sorceries. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out with Opt as a cheap cantrip. We've got Terramander, which can also turn into a 5-5 flyer if we use the Adapt ability, and that also scales with how many instants and sorceries we have in the graveyard. Spectral Sailor, another creature we can play at instant speed, so it synergizes nicely with the other instants and counter spells in the deck, and can also function as a card draw engine for 4 mana. We've got Stern Dismissal and Unsummon as cheap bounce spells. Stern Dismissal can also bounce enchantments, and Unsummon we can also use to bounce our own creature to maybe save it from removal. Then at 2 mana we've got Anticipate as another cantrip, Kel's Dismissal as a cheap bounce spell that also leaves behind a 1-1 zombie token. Then we've got Disdainful Stroke as our first of many counter spells, can counter a spell with converted mana cost 4 or greater. And then Essence Scatter can counter a creature spell. Fairy Vandal can be another win condition, a 1-2 flyer we can play at instant speed, and it picks up a plus 1 plus 1 counter whenever we draw our second card each turn, so it also scales nicely with our card draw. Got Lazo Tap Plating as a way to protect our creatures, gives them all hexproof, can also protect us from a hand disruption spell, and also leaves behind a 1 1 zombie token. Then we've got Lofty Denial as another counter spell that plays well with the Drake tokens from Talrand. Negate can counter target a non creature spell. Quench can counter target spell unless its controller pays 2 mana. A Radical Idea is another cheap cantrip that we can replay from the graveyard if we discard a card from our hand and then exile Radical Idea. We've got Tails End as another counter spell that can counter target activated ability, triggered ability, or legendary spell. And of course, in Brawl, there's no lack of legendary spells since this can always counter the opponent's commander. Unsubstantiate can return target spell or creature to its owner's hand, so it's a temporary counter spell, or it can bounce a creature spell, so it's pretty flexible. Essence Capture can counter a creature spell, and we also get to put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature we control. Arcane Signet is one of the few non-creature spells in the deck that isn't an instant or sorcery, but it's a nice way to ramp into an early Tal Rand. Then Stolen by the Fae is an X spell that returns a creature with converted mana cost X to its owner's hand, and we also get to make X 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature tokens with flying, and Thassa's Intervention can either be a counter spell or a card draw spell. Then at 3 mana we've got Mystical Dispute as another counter spell that especially shines against opposing blue decks, as we can then play it for just 1 mana. Then Winged Words is a 3 mana sorcery that costs 1 less to cast if we control a creature with flying, and then we get to draw 2. Baron is a 2 2 that can bounce a creature. Brazen Borrow can also bounce something with the Petty Theft Adventure, and then afterwards we get access to a 3 1 flyer. Mu Yanling Sky Dancer starts out at 2 loyalty. We can use the plus 2 ability to give a creature minus 2 minus 2 and make it lose flying until our next turn. The minus 3 makes a 4 4 blue elemental bird creature token with flying. And then the minus 8 can also be very fun, giving us an emblem saying islands we control can tap to draw a card. Then Narset can shut down card draw from the opponent while finding non creature spells. Sabotage is one of the few 3 mana counter spells, but we also get to surveil one. And then Gadwick is a nice way to refuel, as we get to play him for X, and then when Gadwick enters a battlefield, we get to draw X cards. And whenever we cast a blue spell, we can also tap target the non-land permanent an opponent controls, so it can also be nice alongside our other instants. And then we've got Reign of Revelation as more card draw. For 4 mana, we get to draw 3 and then discard a card at instant speed, so also plays nicely alongside our counter spells, especially alongside Rewind. A 4 mana instant that counters target spell, and then we get to untap up to 4 lands, so we can still play another instant afterwards. And then Mass Manipulation, another X spell that can gain control of X target creatures and or planeswalkers, so one of the few ways we have of getting rid of planeswalkers. And then moving up the curve, we've got Shark Typhoon, usually gonna cycle this to make an XX Shark token at instant speed. And then we also have Commence the Endgame, a 6 mana instant that cannot be countered, and then we get to draw 2 and then Amass X, where X is the number of cards in our hand, also plays nicely with the other Amass cards in the deck, as we can potentially add even more tokens onto an existing zombie token from Callous Dismissal or Lazata Plating. 
And then last but not least, we've got Sublime Epiphany, a 6 mana instant with a lot of modes. We can counter target spell, counter target activated or triggered ability, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, create a token that's a copy of target creature we control, and target player draws a card, and we can potentially use all modes at once. And then the mana base is very straightforward, 22 basic islands, 1 castle Ventress to scry, and a mystic sanctuary to return an instant or sorcery to the top of our deck. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Kenrith, the returned king. So five color deck. What do we think of this hand? It's not amazing. Do get to play Narsodon 3. Not a whole lot of interaction. I think I do need to find a counter spell for Kenrith at least. Although I guess Narset could find one. Let's try it. Bit of a slower draw. And we picked up some more expensive cards. I might be forced to just cycle Typhoon for zero. Just to draw a card. When I have two X spells in hand, that doesn't seem like a bad idea. Ooh, Sanctum of Stone Fangs. Our opponent's playing all the Sanctums, presumably. And finds... Probably just a winged words. Although plating can also be nice. It's going to be three mana for Sanctum of Shattered Heights. All right, double Sanctum in play already. That's going to apply quite a bit of pressure. I'll take an essence capture. Although opponent knowing about it makes it a lot less effective. I guess Dismissal can also bounce an enchantment, so that's not the worst here. I guess we'll take the Dismissal. And then for now, I could tap out for Talrand. I think I'm just gonna main phase, play Vandal, and then play Winged Words to put a counter on it. And then next turn, I can Talrand Dismissal. Oath of Kaya can take out my Vandal. And Sanctum of Tranquil Light. Wow, our opponent found three Sanctums already. So I can play Talrand and then dismissal the Shattered Heights. Although they can replay it and activate it to kill Talrand. So that's not the best plan. But I don't really have any solutions in hand, so I might as well. And then I guess I should preemptively dismissal the Shattered Heights so they don't get to drain me for three. And it's the most expensive Sanctum for them to replay. It's gonna be a Solemn Simulacrum instead. Alright, so I do get a turn with Talrand in play, which is nice. This Daneful Stroke can counter Kenrith. And I could Sanctuary put back one of my instants or Sorceries here. I guess I don't hate getting back the Winged Words as opposed to the Stern Dismissal. And then I have 6 mana. Could play Gadwick for 1. And then still have Stroke Up or I can just go Sailor plus uh, draw a card if they don't play into the Disdainful Stroke. Opponent's gonna attack Narset, presumably. We'll let Narset go. <laughs> Such violence. That's fine. Can maybe bounce it with the Stolen by the Fae. Dismissal can also bounce something. So 
I have seven mana. This is four if I want to bounce the Caryatids. Leaving me with three more mana. So I can just pass. Or I can Winged Words. Well, it's just Winged Words here. Tail's End is also going to be nice. These are legendary, so... Can even counter the triggered ability from the Sanctums, potentially. So five more mana. Yeah, let's just uh, attack and then... Keep up our two counter spells. And I can always draw with a Sailor if needed. I'll take two. Sanctum of Shattered Heights, I can also Tail Sand since it's legendary. Opponent's got four mana at the ready. Alright, decisions, decisions. Don't hate just attacking for starters. They're gonna use the Sanctum to tap a Drake down, sure. Opponent's at 19. I have 8 mana. So I can potentially bounce plus play the Borrower end of turn. Could look into playing a Gadwick for like 3 and then we can still keep up this Daneful Stroke. Although maybe for next turn I can play it for X equals 4. So how about we stolen by the Fae the Caryatid here? Just to deny a bit of mana. And then pass with Sailor available as well as Stroke and a Brazen Borrower. This kind of feels like there might be a Sweeper incoming, but I don't really want to trade. So I'll take two. Deafening Clarion would be unfortunate, because that one I cannot counter with my Disdainful Stroke, but the four mana ones we can. And then maybe end of turn I'll just bounce the Sanctum here. Although maybe I should just draw and then bounce in my own turn. Yeah, we've got options. If I bounce Sanctum now, I kind of force them to use the White Sanctum right away if they want to. That happens. So let's move to combats. Points at eight. So don't really need to add any more pressure to the board. So, yeah, I think I can play my Planeswalker here. Plus on the Solemn. And then we still have a bunch of our instant speed stuff available. That's fine. Can also bounce it with the Dismissal. Aha, uh -huh, Dream Trawler. That I will counter. And that should be game. Alright, sweet. Talrand definitely dominated this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Lurus of the Dream Den as an actual commander, so not a companion here. And what do we think of this hand? Well, Essence Scatter should be pretty decent, and Essence Capture too, so yeah, we'll keep. And then, yeah, we'll play a Tarmander. Now, I don't necessarily want to put a plus one counter on Terramander, because then I can no longer adapt it later in the game. It's 
gonna be Kanga's Ghost Form on the Alsaid. Can maybe stolen by the Fey and bounce it later. Probably not gonna block with the Terramander, so I'll hit for one. Opponent passes. So I could stolen by the Fey now, although then we're shields down on our counter spells. So I should probably wait until we've got a bit more mana. It's going to be a Falmar Knight Adventure at end of turn. Sure. Then they're probably going to play the 1-1 Death Touch, but I can trade the 1-1 Death Touch for my Fairy Token eventually. Bastion, I will probably quench. Alright, so I don't think I'm putting the quench back on top. I kind of just want to hit my land drops. And then if I draw one more land, I could play Stolen by the Fae for one and still have a two mana counter spell available. Can also tap out for Torrent and then we're shields down on Lurus. That sounds kind of bad. So I'll just hit for one. And keep up my interaction for now. Opponent does tap out for Lurus. I've got a few different options. I think Tail's End is probably the best one. And they let Lurus go to the graveyard, since they had an Omen of the Dead to get it back. Makes sense. Alright, so I can Stolen by the Fey for X equals 1. Sure. And hit for one. Lurus could also essence capture and put a counter on the 1 1 token here. This time Lurus does go to the companion zone for 5 mana. I'll take one. Replace Alsaid. Baron. I could play and still keep up as a scatter. How much is this? I think I'm just gonna end of turn adapt the Terramander here if we don't need to as a scatter. Hit for three. Suppose I could have left a 2 2 back to block the Alsaid since I don't really want to trade one for one, but maybe they play around some instant speed creature here, who knows. Hits for two. It's gonna be a Conclave Tribunal. Sure, I guess that happens. Gets rid of the Terramander. So drawing a land would be great, and there's a castle, perfect. So out of all the options we have available, I think I prefer Torrand, keep up as a scatter here. Opponent only has one card in hand, so they're pretty likely to replay Lurus. Let's see if they keep anything on top. One top, one bottom. Hmm, dead weight, that's unfortunate. It's a great answer to Talrand. Take two. And also good sequencing. 
playing the dead weight before Lurus, so if I had another counter spell, I didn't get a Drake token. Alright, so what's my plan now? Six mana tolerance, pretty pricey. How much is this? Seven mana, so they could replay it next turn. So I could keep up Epiphany. Yeah, let's just do that. And then I'll keep the 2 2 back on defense now. The Epiphany can also bounce the Conclave Tribunal for what it's worth. I'll take one. And if they don't play anything, I can always decide to scry with Castle. So, counter, return, copy, and draw. And probably just bounce the Tribunal. And we'll make another token and draw a card. And our opponent concedes. Alright, we had to counter Lurus a million times, but in the end we got him. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Ashok Dream Render. This could be a Persistent Petitioner deck, in which case we're probably going to have a bad time, but I do have some nice answers here with Mystical Dispute being a one-mana counter spell as well. Alright, it's going to be an Overwhelmed Apprentice, so maybe no Petitioners after all. Fairy Vandal's also a nice one, we can flash in end of turn. Signet resolves. Negates, alright, so we're picking up some nice interaction. I'll take one for now if they attack, opponent passes, we'll flash in the Vandal. And then, uh, probably just pass. Don't necessarily want to trade one for one. And discovery is fine. Opponent passes. Don't want to play Talrand quite yet, but maybe I can play Talrand and I still keep up uh, Mystical Dispute. That would be nice. Or maybe next turn I can play our Planeswalker and then still have a two mana counter. And Drowned Secrets. That is going to add up pretty quickly. Although, I think it's still fine. I just want to counter their big card draw spell to prevent them from refueling, and then they're probably going to be pretty limited in how many blue spells they can cast. So yeah, let's uh, probably just play our Planeswalker, and then next turn I can play Talrand's Thought Collapse. That's fine. Don't really want to fight over it and have my opponent resolve something scary. Ashok. Ashok, I guess I don't mind. Tails ending. Opponent's gonna counter back. But now I've got a pretty good chance of resolving Talrand and having it stick around. Although Ashok will exile my graveyard, so Sanctuary is not going to be at its best. So down to 29 cards in library. But our opponent only has a one card in hand, and Gadwick's a nice way to refuel. Vandal goes after Ashok. Now my opponent has a lot of lands in place, so this dispute's not looking great. Although negate is. Can pressure Ashok. Your 
and then do I Gadwick for the max amount or do I still keep up disputes? I guess we'll just Gadwick for three here. And by not playing the land first, I don't give away the fact that we might be holding dispute. And we can just go face with these. Could also preemptively dismissal the drowned secrets here. I think I'll just pass. Finale of Revelation. Well, Dispute's looking good now. Can tap down Apprentice. Now, Dismissal can bounce my own Gadwick. Unsummon could have potentially done that, and this, I guess, can return Gadwick if I wanted to. So X equals 3, still keeps up Lofty Denial. Sure, why not? It's kind of cute. And then uh, I guess I can afford to dismissal the Drowned Secrets now. And pass a turn. That's fine. And then we can counter Ashok if they replay it. And this should be lethal. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Feather the Redeemed, so an aggressive red-white deck with a bunch of pump spells. I mean, this hand has a couple nice tools, as a capture, especially stolen by the Fae. So I'll try it. Anticipate probably needs to find a land. Brazen Borwer, also a good one. Yeah, let's probably just counter that. Or I can keep SS Capture for Feather and then just bounce the rubber for now. I was hoping to draw land here. Can't really afford to main phase anticipate. So rubber resolves, I think. Sure. And look for lands. Alright, now I can maybe play the Spectral Sailor and Essence Capture, making the Sailor a 2-2. Two -two. I think I'm fine making this trade. Can't tap out for tall rands. Seems fine. Don't need to worry about reckless rage and standard brawl. So if I get to have my tall rand, they can have feather for a turn. And if they use removal on, and if they kill tall rand, then they're probably not playing feather. Take three. Could play a nice juicy stolen by the Fae for three. Don't hate it. Chandra Fire Artisan. It's gonna deal some damage here. A 
Lofty Denial, great addition. Alright, so the Flyers can take out Chandra. We'll take five. Putin moves to combats. Nothing to get back with Arcanists for now. So I'll take four. Could have made a shark, but want to keep up lofty denial here. Alright, so let's denial that, and then I can still play my Brazen Borrower. Rewind's also a good one. I'll leave back one token, I think. In case I want to jump with it. Tenshik, we will rewind. And then I can still cycle Shark Typhoon and make a 3-3. Three, three. Fair enough. So they can use Infuriates on the Vindicator and Mentor, so it's gonna hit us pretty hard. These both trample, so yeah, I might just be dead here, let's see, 15, 17, I have how much toughness, 7, 8, so I can barely survive, this can also pump, so I'll put the 1, 1 here, if I put these two here, maybe I'm better off just triple blocking the Arcanists. And then I'm still taking 10, so if they have another pump spell or burn spell I'm dead, but they only have one card in hand. And this way at least I get to trade for the Arcanists. Sure, let's do this. Alright, so I'm not dead. Tal ran down. And a Krenko. Alright, so how much do I have in the air here? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Getting close to lethal. And we can potentially use Epiphany here to pretty good effect. So how many creatures can I afford to attack with? The Epiphany can copy the Brazen Borrower, Bounce Vindicator or Krenko. So it's going to be pretty good. So let's get in with Borrower and let's say one Drake. Hit them for five down to twelve and then at twelve it shouldn't be too difficult to kill them next turn. So ideally they put something on the stack I can counter. We're just going to pump the Challenger. Do then Mentor onto Vindicator, so then I probably just bounce Vindicator after the attack. And Mentor onto it. I guess I can also counter the ability here. So counter activated, triggered, return, copy, draw. And then we want to bounce Vindicator, copy, borrower, and we draw a card. And then we get to Chump Challenger and eat Krenko. 
Seems okay. Alright, and they should be dead here. Alright, sweet. Definitely a close game against Feather. Generally speaking, aggro decks are probably going to give us the hardest time. As soon as the opponent starts playing four or five mana cards into our two mana counter spells, we're going to be in great shape. But if they have lots of cheap spells, then they can potentially go underneath our counter spells and then we have to play catch up with our bounce spells, which doesn't always work, especially if they can cheaply take care of Talrand. So yeah, overall, if you like counter spells, then Talrand might be the brawl deck for you. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.